If you want to know how to balance a trailer tire on the trailer at home, no special tools, keep on watching. To go about balancing a trailer wheel or sometimes even a car wheel, the first thing you need is you need an axle that moves effortlessly. So you can do this on a car as well. This is a trailer. If you have trailer brakes, the brakes need to not rub at all. You can't have any resistance, light touching anything from the brakes. So sometimes you can do it on the front of a, like a rear wheel drive truck. You can do it on a two wheel drive front. So you can move the tires from the front, from the back to the front and do it on a front two wheel drive hub. You'll never be able to do it on a rear wheel drive axle on a front wheel drive car. Sometimes you can get away with balancing them on the back. And this is just a rough balancing. This isn't perfect. So the first thing we're going to do is actually take the tire and just watch it. We'll speed this up. And obviously the heaviest spot is going to settle down to the bottom. This is the spot I get. I'm just going to take a piece of chalk and that's my bottom. That's my heaviest. And I'm going to do this a couple times. I'm just going to kind of lightly, I'm just barely, barely touching it. And we're just going to watch it go back and forth and we're going to do it a couple times and we're going to get an average. Heaviest spot wants to fall somewhere in this area. I can do it a million times. We'll just, we'll put this at the top. The time I just, it's a little over here. So you can rotate, rotate it around until you get there. The next step is we need to add weights. So we're going to need a bunch of different weights, various weights. And I've spent years collecting these. Um, I got most of them just in one or two hauls just by asking the tire guys like, hey, can I have some extra weights for fishing? You know, so, and they just give you a little bucket of them or something like that. Um, there's a couple different types. Uh, these ones are getting a little more harder to find. These are for steel rims. Seems like everything's aluminum. The ones that either don't have a mark or they just have a circle, that is for a steel rim. And the ones for aluminum or magnesium rims, stuff like that, usually have an A. You see how that's an A? Um, that's definitely an A. And this one... This one looks like an A, but that one is more than like, that was a steel rim one. And you can tell, usually they, they're spread out way further than a, uh, where's a steel one? There's a steel one versus an aluminum one. But the problem is you can't really interchange them. The, uh, the metal ones, the tab's not long enough to put on. So, or you have the stick-on ones, and the stick-on ones, I'll put a link below. You can buy these. These are great for manual balance as well, because you just use some double-sided type uh, I use some 3m sticky tape Stuff right here actually uh, molding tape is what I use to attach these type of weights and I actually use these weights quite a bit um, on aluminum versus doing these because these just gouge up pretty aluminum rims and you can put these right in the center when you're manually balancing so we're gonna grab a couple of various weights 1.5 ounces which looks like it's 48 grams uh, 1. 25 which is 35 grams this one's 64 grams at 2.25 ounces and we're going to go try these out and see which one makes a difference let's start out with a big heavy one 2.25 put it just the opposite because that's the heavy side so we need to add more weight over here don't put it on all the way just barely snug because you gotta rip this thing off again and a lot of these times these takeoffs i mean if you can get new ones but these takeoff ones, you do have to uh, smash down that little tab again. Sometimes they get bent coming off. And now, what, what I'm going to do is actually set it side to side and just tap it. And it is looking like that side does want to go down way more than I forced it to. See, it's creeping. We'll, even, we'll start it again and we'll see if it wants to creep up or if it wants to stop. It wants to stop. You got to be soft with this. We'll nudge it down just very lightly. And it wants to continue after my little bit of a nudge. Pull it up. And it stops. And it actually continued down just a little bit. That shows me that this one is just a little too heavy. Not way too heavy. 2.25 uh, ounces. 40, 64 grams. And we'll go... We'll go to 1.25. We'll go way lighter than I think that we need. And an airplane wants to fly overhead, like always. We'll put that sideways. 
and you can see just automatically that falls all by itself. We'll come back over here. The heavier side should stop falling. I don't even have to touch it and that side falls. That means I'm way underweight. So 2.25 ounces is a little bit too heavy and 1.25 is uh, way too light. So now we're going to try 1.5. I think this is still a little bit heavier and just watch it it takes a little bit of practice but you're just getting it close and it makes it a thousand times better than it was you know to have something way out of balance or just barely out of balance is a big difference between it shaking at 65 miles per hour versus 85 miles an hour something to that effect where you can't really feel it And I see it continued. I pushed it that way and continued up. So this one's a little light. I got to find myself about a 175 or even a 2 would be about ideal. And if you can't find the exact, we have this 2.25, I can actually just cut chunks off. And tire shops actually do that on occasion. I've, I found ones that tire shops have put on that they've just cut off the ends to give more precise. When the, when the tire guy is really particular and awesome tire guy he'll make it exact when it doesn't come in the exact weight so let me go grab a two and put that on that seems to be about equal either way whether I move it down or whether I move it up. That still might just be, I mean, it's... It's dead on close. That, that 1.75, 50 grams is super close. So what you can do is just put it on, spin it, walk away, come back, you know, a minute later and see where it lands and mark it. Do it again, mark it, and it should get pretty close to the bottom. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give it a spin, and we're gonna come back in a minute. The plan. That's actually great. It's actually great to have opposite results. That means it's, and I can keep doing it. And I'm just going to have random. So this one, this 1.75 is great. So we are installed. This tire is balanced. And I've had trailer tires. You don't even really know they're that bad. But they put a lot of vibration through the trailer and through the tongue of the vehicle. And it makes a world of difference um, on just how the, the trailer feel that you get through the vehicle. You don't even notice it until after you balance it. So that one is balanced. This chalk will just come right off old school this is old school cool pro tip for you guys i have owned so many trailers i have bought sold fixed repaired repaired customers trailers i've done so many bearings it's unbelievable if you want to know when your bearings are going to go out if it's going to leave you stranded on a long trip what you do is you drive a distance you stop for gas and when you stop for gas the first thing you do is you get out of your vehicle and you feel the hub if the hub is if you're hauling a full load, it should be warm. If you're hauling nothing, it should be pretty much cold. Um, if this is anywhere uncomfortable that you can't put your hand on it, your bearing's gonna go out. Um, this axle right here is a brake axle, so if you're braking a lot, you're gonna have heat in it. You're gonna have residual heat through the, the drum, but it still shouldn't be uncomfortably hot on the hub. The hub should never get hot. That is a sure sign that the bearings are going out. It's gonna seize up. The wheel's gonna come off. And you're gonna have a crap day so from time to time every time you get out for gas and you're waiting for that gas your truck to fill up with gas get out and just touch these they should not be warm They're more than just barely lukewarm barely warm and the good indicators feel different ones if you feel this one and it's warm feel the one on the other side if it's the same temperature you're good if this one's 
way warmer than that one, this one's going out. Bang, bang. Oh, no, you did. Oh. Hey, come here. Jump. Get it. Ah. Yeah, get that tire. Jump. Jump. 